Children have long suffered the collateral damage of relationships and marriages that have gone sour. Many couples don't know what their rights are when it comes to custody. Well, joining us with some highlights is Tasha Jean Kotz, attorney at law and founder of the law office of Tasha J. Kotz. Great to have you. Thank you. So when we're talking about custody, probably one of the most difficult aspects of parents splitting up. So I'm sure you've seen lots of stories come through your doors. That's right. It is. Uh, a lot of times when couples go through separations or divorces, their uh, main concern are their children. Uh, the number one thing that I hear as a family law attorney is I want joint custody of my child. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult for family law attorneys to explain to clients joint custody is a very vague term in South Carolina because we have different types of custody. Mm -hmm. um, and so we really want to be able to explain to clients um, what joint custody actually means. Um, and in situations in each family, it's different. So that's that's kind of our tasks as attorneys. Can you give us a couple of examples of joint custody? Sure, so in um, a married couple, uh, the biological parents, if someone comes in and they say, I want 50-50 time with a child. Um, generally, what I like to explain to our clients is a joint custodial situation truly depends and comes down to decision making. Um, so when I'm talking to a client, I tell them, if you're thinking about a 50-50 custodial relationship, that falls into the category of parenting time. Um, our custody situation would say, okay, what decision making do you want? Mm -hmm. um, and the big decision making would be the areas that affect the child the most, which are normally um, medical decision making, extracurriculars, education, and religious training. Mm -hmm. So um, I really try to try to, to teach my clients to think about custody in two different aspects. Uh -huh. the decision making and then in parenting time. Oh, interesting. Yes. Do you have many parents coming to you that want to have sole custody? I do. So generally a lot of parents come and they want sole custody with someone just to have a parenting time that's very limited. Um, really what I tell clients is um, the overall factor our courts consider is the best interest of the child standard. So if you're thinking about the best interest of the child, do you believe that court would order a parent to have sole custody mm -hmm. and not letting that child, you know, having a very small amount of time with that child. Um, generally speaking, it doesn't happen in a lot of um, married couples. Um, yeah. A sole custody really is if there's an unfit biological parent or if the parents are not married mm -hmm. and is a single mother generally would be granted sole custody. Does this ever trickle down to the grandparents to extended family? So generally speaking in South Carolina, grandparents and third party um, family members don't have rights in South Carolina, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately. So in the event that one of the um, biological parents are determined unfit, relatives and grandparents can be considered. However, right now they have no rights. Interesting. So, so what happens in the case that both parents are unfit? So normally in the case where both parents are unfit, the Department of Social Services would get involved um, and take into a, um, a bunch of factors into consideration. And generally speaking, DSS would rather place a child with a relative such as a grandparent. Um, however, if none of them are available, the child would likely go into foster care. And let's back up a couple of steps. What if the child is, say, 15 years old, 16 years old, still needs to have that legal guardian watching over them, but they have a preference. Do their voices get heard? How does that happen? So in South Carolina, our courts generally appoint guardian ad litems. Those are neutral parties who would get involved to be able to hear the voice, listen to the child, kind of be that child's attorney. And then that guardian ad litem would report back to the court that child's preferences. The last thing our courts would want to do is put a child on the stand against either parent. Sure. But we do want to hear their preferences, and that's why we normally normally have that neutral guardian ad litem get involved. I see. And in the event that a child is moved from one state to another, which state does that then determine the custody? Because if you don't come from South Carolina, the decision wasn't made here, but then one of the parents moves here, for right. instance, does anything change? Relocation super difficult for family law attorneys. Generally speaking, what I would say is if you're planning on relocating, mm -hmm. you really want to be able to figure out why it is in that child's best interest to relocate. Okay. Um, what I tell my clients is, are the schools better? Is the crime rate lower? Are there better opportunities in sports or whatever perhaps is particular to your child? Why are you 
you moving to that state and is it in the best interest of your child? Mm. Um, so really those are the things to take into consideration because those are what the court wants to yeah. know. And best way to mediate the situation for the most amicable outcome? Uh, for re relocations truly is to go to mediation. Yeah. Um, we have, it's mandatory in South Carolina, especially in family law cases. Right. So relocation cases generally end up at mediation because they are so difficult. Okay. Um, so that's my number one um, recommendation is to take it to mediation. Goodness, I think, Tasha, we've just scratched the surface of this. <laughs> yes. This is a very deep, deep subject, but I want to thank you so much for shedding some light. Yes, ma'am. Appreciate that. <laughs> We're back after this.